Hi, my name is Peter Jones. I'm a principal engineer with Cisco Systems and I'm also the chairman of the MBAST Alliance. I'm here at V Brown Bag at Cisco Live in Europe and I want to talk to you about multi gigabit NBASE-T and 802.3BZ. So you can follow me on Twitter or you can actually follow the hashtag hash NBASE-T. Let's get started. I want to talk briefly about the wireless environment. As you're all familiar, we are moving, wireless has been moving rapidly. If you cast your mind back, a few years ago, wireless was a nice to have thing. What we're seeing these days is wireless has become pervasive, has moved into, mission, moved into rich media, and is now becoming mission critical. Also in this time, we're seeing that wireless has evolved from being like a meg 11 megabits a second, 3G at 54, 11N at 450. We're now up to 11AC wave one at a gigabit, and wave two is coming. Wave two is looking to go 3.4 or 6.8 gigabits per second. At this stage, and in the future, we'll go up to 10 gig. So at this stage, we're starting to see APs coming out now, where the AP is faster than the backhaul link to the switch that supplies it. So what do I need to do about this? Clearly, you could run multiple links. It's not a great idea. You need to go recable, and link aggregation has its issues. So how can I address this urgent problem for all of us who want to attach fire wireless? I want to talk a little bit about what we're doing in multi-gigabit, um, N-based T, and not added to 3BZ. We're going to build 2.5 and, and 5G based T. Most of you will be familiar with 100 based T and 1000 based T and also 10G based T. 100 based T is a fast Ethernet, lots of it all around the place. We standardized 1000 based T or gigabit Ethernet in 1999. We standardized 10 gigabit Ethernet based T in 2006. So you might ask, 10 years later, why am I still running 1000 based T as the bulk of my enterprise access? So, what you might want to think about is between 2003 and 2014, we sold 70 billion meters of Category 5E and Category 6 cable. That's the cable that supports 1000 base T. That's about 10 meters each. In the last 20 years, we sold more than 4 billion fast Ethernet and, and gigabit Ethernet base T ports. So one of the interesting things about base T is it allows you to do incremental upgrade. You can basically upgrade a switch and then you can upgrade all you, your end devices piece by piece. This lets you basically transition your enterprise simply over time without requiring a full rip and replace. So we know that existing specifications support one gigabit per second over the category 5E and category 6 cable, and that is currently 90% of the world base. There's about 1.4 billion base C outlets in the world, 1.3 billion of them are 5E and 6. So today, about 100, about 100 million could actually go and do 10G base T, but what about the 1.3 billion? So, existing specifications only run 1G based T over 100 meters of structure cabling for 5E or 6. But we could actually do faster rates. So let's imagine I look at this investment cabling, which is the vast bulk of what you have. And by the way, that takes a lot to replace. Normally we replace cable maybe every 15 years, maybe every 20 years, or maybe when the building burns down. So some numbers we have show that that cabling might cost 200 or 300, maybe $700 a, a, a time to replace. So also that you find basic issues, if you want to go and replace that cabling, you might need to open up the wall. Maybe you need to move people out. If you're a hospital, that's a real problem, right? You can't open up the roof above an operating theater. So you find people are very resistant to recable the networks unless they build a new building or it's a full reskin. So we have this huge install base. We can give you more value out of that without a recable. So how are we going to make that work? So I want to talk to you about Cisco Multi Gigabit. So we announced this and introduced it in uh, January, January of 15 in Cisco Live in Milan. And we're a year on now. So let me quickly talk through this. So we start off being standards compliant. So we're standards compliant with 1000 based T, which everyone has, and also with 10G based T. That's the IEEE specs. So right now we have an active IEEE project added to it 3BZ, which is standardizing 2.5 and, and 5G based T. And so that standard is in progress, and we will be standards compliant with that. Again, for Cisco Multi Gigabit, we start off wanting to give you PoE. Um, that's basically PoE for 15 watts, P PoE Plus for 30 watts, and also UPoE for 60. So we're the first people to basically have this out so you can still maintain giving people both their data and their power over one cable. That means all the systems you've built up for powering your APs or your cameras will just keep working. So we want to fundamentally give you infrastructure investment protection. So we talked already about this. You have a whole lot of category 5E and category 6 tables in your wall. I want to make sure you can use that while still deploying new speeds 
to basically service those, th those users in your, those parts of your network, they need higher speeds. And I want to make sure that you can basically maintain your, cab your cabling structure. As you all know, for, ba for base T cabling, the magic number is 100 meters. So they assume between your switch and your end device, there's 100 meters of cable. This actually breaks down into about five meters of patch cable, one or two patch panels, 90 meters of solid cable, another one or two connections, and five meters of patch. That is your 100 meter reach. So everyone builds cabling for systems in their buildings based on that. This, in the States, this is based on what you, you will get out of TAR, TR42. In, elsewhere in the world, it might come out of the ISO, IEC. But again, everyone builds structured cabling based on that assumption. You have to live with inside that assumption or you're up to recabling. So my goal is to, to look and allow you all to basically take out your 1,000 base T-links, replace your switch, replace your AP, and run 2.5 or 5 gig on the same cable plant. Basically, that's going to be future-proof. That's going to make it easy to upgrade and adopt a new technology. So let's talk a little bit about how we might pull this off. If we think a little bit about how you build base T5s today, CAT5e is specified to 100 megahertz worth of bandwidth. CAT6 in the middle here is specified to 250. And 6a, which, which is what you need for, for 10G base T, is specified up to 500 megahertz at 100 meters. So let me think a little about this a little bit. So 100 base T. If you look at the way the encoding works, they basically run, um, they run PAM2, and so basically running uh, four, four bits per second per hertz per pair. You do the math, they end up with an Nyquist of about 62 and a half megahertz. If you look at 10G base T, the encoding is more complex. They're getting 6.25 bits per symbol down. And so you do the math, they end up with an Nyquist of around about 400 megahertz. So these are fitting nicely, the 1000 base T is fitting nicely inside category 5E, and 10G base T is fitting nicely inside category 6A. But you remember, we told you before, category 6A is less than 10% of the world population. So, I'm going to try and solve your problem. I need to fit with inside the install-based the install cable. So, 2.5 G base T. If I basically take the 10 G base T coding, tweak it a little bit, and run it, run it at quarter speed, I fit inside 100 megahertz. So within, within the Nyquist uh, limit for that category 5E cabling. Do the same thing. If I take, again, I take the 10 G base T coding, I run it about half the speed, I get a Nyquist of about 200 megahertz for 5 G base T. So I'm comfortably with inside category six, which is about half the word's cable. And with a little bit of care, I can run this on 5E. So basically what I have is I have a way to take the signaling techniques from 10G base T, clean them up a little bit, slow them down, and I'm gonna push that, that signaling the faster rate down the existing cabling plant. Does that make sense? Okay, let's move on. The in-base T alliance. So this is the vendor alliance of which I'm the chair. So we, we, we have a specification, not a standard, because we're not a standards organization. So you can see we have a whole lot of promoter companies, uh, Cisco, Aquantia, Intel, Marvell, NXP, and Xilinx. So these are the key leads of the alliance. They run, they're on the board and we help run the alliance. Our contributor companies work in our technical and marketing working groups. We have a whole lot of adopters. These are people who think the spec is interesting and want to build product based off it. So as I said, we have a whole bunch of people. We include components, silicon, system, cabling, and test. So we have the whole ecosystem that we can pull this new standard off and get it out to market fast. Now, our goal is to basically explain to people how it can be deployed with safety and also advance, advance the cause of getting the standard done in a hurry. So our fundamental role is to en enable widespread deployments of all the specifications and faci facilitate interoperability. But the key thing to remember is without interop, we have no story. So let's move on. Let's talk use cases for a second. I'll go through a few of them. Clearly, the most important use case we started with was to address the needs of the enterprise wireless APs as a transition from 11N to AC Wave 1 to AC Wave 2. We also want to look at things like network attached storage. I want to give the, the brand bag guys, I want to build you a Thunderbolt adapter for your Mac and a local network attached storage so you can offload your videos at maybe two and a half or five gig instead of one. I want to think about service provider gateways because the downstream for Pond now can run at two and a half or five gig. I want to think about small cell, right? Think about the way you want to build a small cell inside the building. If you're doing a lightweight processing, the radio is sitting over there, the brains is over here. Those guys want a backhaul at 1.5 or 2 gigabits. You can use security cameras. We, I, I really love compact switches. They're very handy for like a downstream. You could think about it in the retail store. Maybe imagine your store core. You would have like a stack of switches in the middle of the store. You might then have um, a compact switch in the edge or maybe at, the, at a cash register. Medical devices is fun. If you think about the way medicine is evolving, 
They have a lot of high bandwidth devices like MRI scanners, X-ray machines, and they also have people like doctors who want to get those dumps on their, lap on their pads really fast. So also desktop and gaming PCs, right? The gamer guys don't want the most, most bandwidth they can get. So I think there's a whole lot of cases where the high-end use in your organization really want more than a gig. And I want to get you away from the, I'm sorry, I can't do that because you need new cabling, to absolutely, I can make this work for you. So we have a whole lot of use cases, both enterprise and IoT and home. Quickly on status, because I want to run fast, I want to make sure I don't uh, exceed my limitation. So here's a quick picture of the way that 8.3BG shows this. What we're seeing over here, over here on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side, is we started this process around about November 14. We ran what's called a call for interest. That starts your project running. We actually got a task force. We actually had our first meeting as a study group and approved our objectives, which is our goals, in January 15. We became a study group a little while later. And then in our first meeting as a study group, we adopted technical baselines. So we moved really fast because we want to address the user need, not argue about which coding works for a long time. So right now, we've just decided that we have a complete document and we're starting a wider ballot. All things being equal, will be done by September 14. Sorry, September of 16. So that will be less than two years from when we started the process to when our standard is done. We expect that it will be a software upgrade for anyone shipping NBASD today to the standard. So we believe right now you can adopt with confidence without risk. So let me try and summarize it. We want to do multi-gigabit NBASD dot 3BZ. They're all the same thing. I want to give you 2.5 and, and 5G T over the category 5 and 6 cable you have today. I want to let you adjust your network so you can grow your network as your users need it. And also, you can, so you can size the end device to what it needs. If your API only needs 2 gig, build a 2.5 gig interface. If what you have is really a workstation, maybe you want 10 GBase T, but 5 gig is much better than getting one. So, as an aside, I can tell you, right now the world is dominated by 1,000 base T. What you're seeing on this chart is the relative proportion, and you see right now we are dominated by 1,000 by thousand base T. I can tell you that wireless is not going to stop. My friends in Dot 11, they're doing a great job. They keep going faster. I want to make sure that I can support them and give them the backhaul that they need. As I mentioned before, uh, although Category 6A is growing as a cabling type, right now we have about 90% of the world base is 5 and 6. That's a huge investment that we need to leverage. And as I mentioned, we have well understood technical methods for getting more bandwidth down the cable that exists. So, if you've enjoyed this, what I really would like you to do, go and look for Cisco TechWise TV. Go look at their fundamentals of NBASD video. About four minutes, and he, it's a beautiful show from Rob Boyd. Watch the video, recommend it to your friends. Go visit nbasd.org, the home site for the NBASD Alliance. Go read the material, read the white papers, look at the product listings. And go visit, and look at cisco.com slash go slash multi-gigabit to find about our multi-gigabit products. With that, I'm done. Thank you, V Brown Bag. It was a lot of fun.